these various cultural groups, whether it was the Egyptians or Sumerians or Mayans or the Hopewellians or the megalithic builders, had access to some universal system from some source that was outside their own cultural context. And I suggest that the source of that goes back into deep time that takes us back beyond the threshold of known history into the realm of mythical history, which means we're going back like into the Ice Age, back into the Pleistocene, to use the geolog geologist term, back into the, to the deep recesses of the human tenure on planet Earth, uh, whose only memory has come down to us, not in the form of recorded history, but in the form of myth and epic story and legend and so forth. <clears throat> because as it turns out, if we, and this, this is again is a, is a good topic for the sacred geometry class, when we analyze Plato's description of Atlantis, of course, what do, what do you think we discover? Is that those numbers are embedded in, in the proportions of Atlantis, as he describes it, the urban complex of Atlantis. And that, to me, is a strong hint that we're talking about something that goes way back. Because the, Plato basically gave the, sink, the date of the sinking of Atlantis as 9,000 years prior to Solon, the, the, Egyptian, the, the, the Athenian poet and statesman, Solon, did a 10-year exile in Egypt. And it was Solon that brought back the tale of Atlantis and presented it to the, to the Greeks. And Solon basically made that journey around 600 BC. So if you add the 9,000 years to the 600 BC, we come up with a date of about 11,600 years ago for Plato's date for this, the, the, the demise of Atlantis. Well, it's very interesting that the date 11,600 years has been independently discovered by geologists looking at the tempo of various catastrophes that have occurred on Earth. And to those catastrophes is where I'm now going to turn. <clears throat> 